Okay, so <clears throat> we're ready to continue the battery replacement procedure here. On the far left is the package I just received in the mail. It's the replacement battery for the iPod Touch first generation. It's a 980 milliamp hour 3.7 volt battery. Um, I bought it on Amazon.com for $11.95. It appears to come with a couple of nice tools. The green one here is I think the Apple pry tool. It probably would have been good to have that last week when I was trying to open this case originally. I might not have had to use the razor blade or do so much cosmetic damage to the case. The other tool here is a very tiny Phillips head screwdriver which is really for accessing other parts of the iPod that I don't need to access but there's a number of screws um, along the edge of the iPod in these locations here that you can use that additional screwdriver for but I'm not going to be touching those so the way I'm going to replace this battery is I don't want to touch any of these solder connections in here um, I'm ultimately not going to touch these at all what I'm going to do is cut off the uh, three wires as close as I can to the old battery and then solder those three wires onto the new batteries three wires and then pull those sleeves over the, over the solder connection for insulation um, I think that's going to be a much easier process for me than trying to solder into this area here get the old wires released and the new ones on mainly because there's glue over this connection as well so it's not just a matter of removing solder the old solder but also the glue so instead of doing that I'm just going to try to resolder the new wires over the old battery wires first let me just show that the iPod itself is still working with the old battery um, so everything's still working with the old battery at the moment so now I'm going to snip this old battery away and I want to give myself as much room to work with as possible here I'd, so I'm going to try to cut as close as I can to the battery here these three the red white and black and this battery the new battery also has red white and black uh, color-coded wires on it so I'm using a very small pair of wire snips here I, I imagine uh, a sharp pair of scissors would do this job just fine as well um, imagine there's some concern that as I do this I don't short out the other lead um, so there's two of three down now we'll do the black one and part of the problem is going to be of course uh, making these new wires um, stripping them to get a little of the insulation off them so okay the old batteries away now I wonder if it's got a little bit of charge internally I'm just kind of curious if it would come on at all now okay now so there's no other energy source in there so you can see the old battery here it's actually very flexible um, and the new battery that's going to replace it are physically really the same same size so that's good all right so the next pro part of the process is going to be to um, get a little bit of the insulation off these three pieces these three wires so that I can solder them onto the new battery wires I actually think I'm having a little success here I just want to make sure I don't accidentally cut the wire okay so I stripped a little bit of it away there probably about less than a millimeter I actually don't think that's enough um, going to try a little bit further down here hopefully to double this problem is of course I can easily snip the wire with this particular tool okay so there I got quite a bit off that actually was reasonably successful I got probably 
or at least a couple of millimeters off there. So if I can be as successful with the other two wires, again, without having them pulling them out from their actual solder connection, and I actually think we'll be about ready to solder the new one. All right, so I'm going to be happy with that. Um, so that's all three of the iPods wires there. Now, so we got to connect the, the new battery wires up to it. I'd really like things to work such that I just slide those rubber sleeves back over it because that would be the best insulation, but I don't see how to slide those rubber sleeves out of the way um, back down the wire. I'd like to slide them slide the sleeve back down this wire, connect the wires together, and slide the sleeve over the connection, but I just don't think that's going to work. Um, so I'm going to either simply twist these and then wrap some insulation, some electrical tape around them, or I'm going to solder them. I haven't decided which, so I'm going to see how much we have here in the way of space at the end of this. So there's actually not a lot of um, space at the end of this black wire. So let me take a look at the other two here. Okay, so each of those is not terribly long. All three of those, we have about a millimeter of uh, bare wire, exposed wire to work with. So actually have more exposed wire to deal with on the actual iPod. So I will um, try to expose a little bit more of these wires, each of these wires, so I have a little bit more. And these ones on the battery are even more delicate than the ones on the iPod. So they're, they're a little bit thinner than Yeah, that is not working too well. Okay, I got a little bit more exposed there. A little bit more exposed there. Just nice to have a little bit more contact space to work with. All right, so all those are now exposed and lengthened. Okay, I'm going to be honest. This is a really crappy soldering iron, and I haven't soldered anything in, in ages. But um, I'm holding the wire from the iPod there. I just kind of line the two up, and I'm just going to try to touch the uh, touch it with just a little bit of solder there. And you can see the crappy soldering iron just that's actually a pretty crappy solder right there. So this will make it look even uglier. Hopefully there's still going to be enough space in the cabinet to put it all back in there. That may, may wind up being a problem too. Alright, so we've got the red wires in position here. Let's try this again on the red connection. All right, I'm going to wrap that with a little tape as well. We've uh, got the new battery connected, and I'm going to see if we can plug the charger into this thing and get an indication that it's charging it. Ah, well, that's uh, that indicates the battery's at 50% charge already which is actually a good thing, but does it indicate that it's charging it? I, 
I thought it gave a, uh, I guess it does indicate it's charging it up there. I, I thought it gave kind of a swirly looking fluid in the battery to indicate that it was filling up. Well, all right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the case back on it, given that. Okay, so this is the, uh, I, I glued the uh, battery down with essentially a little electrical tape, double face electrical tape on the back of it. So it's just basically just kind of holding it in place. Um, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to fit the case on now with these elements sticking up. Um, so, okay. all right, so it's, it's sealed back up, but I'll be honest, um, one part of the corner here, right here, which is where I originally entered, entered it, is not really sealing all the way. And of course, the fat wires for the battery are right over here too. So. I'm hoping in another day or two I'll be able to completely seal this back up because it is not it is not sealing. I put a lot of pressure on it already, but nonetheless, uh, it is working. Just has barely got a hairline opening there, which indicates to me it hasn't sealed completely. But it is working. So battery replaced for twelve dollars plus. I learned a lot. So good luck if you try it yourself.